British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak is facing a mass departure of lawmakers with the number of resignations surpassing the level the Conservative Party actually suffered before a landslide defeat back in the 1997 election. After Rishi Sunak called a surprise early election for the 4th of July, at least 78 members of parliament of his Conservative Party have announced their decision not to stand for re-election. In fact, high-profile UK members of parliament Michael Gove and Andrea Leedsom have actually joined a record-breaking exodus of Conservative MPs from the UK House of Commons, further indicating the turmoil within the party ahead of the upcoming general election. Former Prime Minister Theresa May is also among the senior MPs stepping away, with former Defence Minister Ben Wallace already having announced his decision to actually leave frontline politics. But Conservative members of Parliament say so many colleagues were leaving because it was unlikely that the party would win the election and many had grown tired of the infighting as well as polarisation in Parliament. To better understand what's happening in Westminster, Nicholas joins us with a quick update from Ground Zero. Thanks so much, Nicholas, for making time for us. Many Tory MPs are saying they won't contest. Are these warning bells for Rishi Sunak? In fact, the opinion polls suggest his Conservative Party is starting the campaign a long way behind its main rival, the Labour Party. Well, I think he's got the warning bells already uh, because the opinion polls show that there is virtually no chance of the Conservative Party forming the next government. Indeed. Now, that doesn't mean all the current members of Parliament are going to lose their positions as MPs, but a lot of them are. No question about that. Uh, the number of MPs for the Conservative Party may be cut to half the present level. So in that sense, it's really not a surprise that after 14 years of the Conservative Party being in power, a lot of them have said enough is enough. Uh, they're going off to do something else or indeed they're going to retire. Um, but we always get a bit surprised when the numbers creep up. And I think it's around 80 members of the Conservative Party. 78. But Mr. Sunak will be hoping that improving economic news and a focus on the party's policy platforms will actually help the Tories turn things around as the campaign progresses. But the Labour Party now has an average poll lead of 23 percentage points, a deficit that no governing party has successfully overcome in an election campaign. As we speak, Nicholas, is it fair to say that there's almost no chance that the Conservative Party can turn things around? Um, it's very unlikely. I mean, six weeks before polling and uh, 21 points amiss in the opinion polls, in other words, 21 points behind the opposition Labour Party. Uh, they can pick up some of that and they may well do so. But in the three or four days since the announcement of the election, we haven't really seen the signs of that. So it is um, a, a case of despair within the ruling Conservative Party. They don't have a good record. Um, and least of all, the number of times their leadership has changed we're talking about 14 years, but we've had four Conservative Prime Ministers in that time, which is a bit excessive, really. And the current uh, incumbent, the Rishi Sunak, he's only been in power as Prime Minister for a year and a half. So uh, he's got a long way to go. Um, the, the widespread expectation is that this election will be lost by the Conservatives. There's a little bit more of a question mark as to who will win. We, we assume that the Labour Party will win, but there are other factors, notably the situation in Wales, the situation in Scotland. That's where regional issues come to the fore. So I'm certainly not going to make predictions of the outcome of the election beyond saying that there is, I would say, almost no chance that the Conservatives will turn things around and form the next government. Well, for the third time in a row, the UK general election starting gun was fired early by a Conservative Prime Minister. So far, as you pointed out, all the evidence suggests that it is Mr. Sunak's Labour opponent, Keir Starmer, who's about to make history. But life, Nicholas, must seem bleak for the British Prime Minister these days. Does he have a lot to worry about in terms of his leadership for the Tories? Uh, no, his uh, situation at the moment is he's just trying to put a brave face on the situation of the Conservative Party. 
why should he have other worries? Uh, he's, a, a, as is well known, he's a very rich man. He doesn't need the job uh, for his livelihood. He can go off and do something else and probably will. But I think he's a he, he's a popular figure. He's certainly a popular figure within his constituency in Yorkshire. So there's every chance he will be re-elected to Parliament. I think he, he had one of the larger majorities beforehand. So personally, I don't think he's got much to worry about. But in terms of his leadership of the Conservative Party, he's got quite a lot to worry about. Well, Nicholas, thanks so much for joining us with the latest from Ground Zero. We will, of course, revert to you for regular updates in the run-up to the July 4th election.